Fire the moose. I want to start this video off with a reminder that the Faux Bow Pro is a real bow shooting faux arrows. And if you're not careful, and if you don't give it the proper respect, your arm might look like this. Hello everyone, I'm Carius, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Moose. The M0053-1, also known as Moose, designed by Eric the Moose. So the Moose is a bolt-action sniper rifle that uses mega darts. It uses mega darts, has a 42 bearing mega scar in the front of it. It's built around a K14 spring, which is huge. This one's actually got a K12 spring in it, which is slightly stronger than a K14. And it is easily capable of pushing mega darts 200 FPS or more and achieving a crazy range and accuracy with said mega darts. It is basically a blown up B variant caliburn in terms of its function. You've got your pusher, which is a skinny pusher, by the way. When this is locked in and rotated down, the magazine comes out and can be loaded just fine, which is pretty cool. It is a giant blaster, but ergonomically I find it is very comfortable, especially with a grip added right here. I've just been in love with it, honestly. I've been having a ton of fun with it. I spent last weekend sniping people at an R4 with mega darts. Had several darts get stuck in the scar, but it was mostly the dart's fault because the dart was worn out and falling apart. So darts where the head's trying to blow off don't quite make it through the scar, but that's to be expected. The breech does allow you to load darts in when there's no magazine, which is nice. And it has a priming indicator back here. We can see whether your spring is compressed and you can see the plunger in there and that's ready to fire which is pretty useful. The ergonomics are nice. You've got this big palm rest grip that helps a lot with the kind of balance feeling of such a huge blaster. Having it rest against your palm like that makes it feel pretty nice. And having a grip up here, I find, makes this thing very nice ergonomically. Hello everyone, I'm Carius, and this blaster is officially too big for this workstation camera set up. <laughs> at the low end, this thing will still shoot mega darts at almost 200 FPS. It's compatible with all kinds of different springs. It can even take a K25, which I haven't tried yet, but might get you down to the kind of 150-ish FPS, but for the most part, you're looking at shooting mega darts over 200 FPS, which is crazy. Just for a size comparison to the blaster from last video, here's the Ranger. If I line it up stock to stock, we've got almost a foot of extra barrel coming off of this thing. It makes the Ranger look small. It makes most blasters look small. In fact, even the Mark IV that people have a tendency to complain about being a little too large, also kind of tiny compared to this thing. So if you've ever had a problem with a blaster being too big, this is not for you. I, on the other hand, love it. It's super silly. So I just want to do a video, kind of my experience using the blaster and my thoughts on a few things that I had to fix in the process of putting it together and a few issues I'm still having that are minor but worth noting. So building it, I, as you can tell, used an entire spool of rainbow filament and tried to print it so that the colors matched all the way down. You can see on this part I ran out at the very end of the spool and continued the stock with black. So what you see right here is an entire roll of filament. Um, I wish I had known how much this middle section insets into the two pieces next to it, because I would have skipped this one. I would have just printed this in black or something, and then the, the color would match better in this middle section, because this magwell and then this part actually do mate with each other, and then the colors would have been seamless all the way down, but, but that's super minor. It's just if you are trying to do a color variegated thing like this, I think it would look better if you print this middle section and something else and go straight from here to here that way. Although, I wouldn't recommend going with this approach because I printed half the parts of this blaster upside down. I started from the front and went this way 
most of these parts want to be printed the other direction, especially the stock. The, uh, the supports that I had to remove from the stock were a huge pain in the ass, and that was only a problem because I was stubborn and printed it starting with this surface, and it needed support for the entire inside of the back spring rest and, and everything, so it was a pain that was completely self-inflicted. I printed the stock butt plate out of TPU to make it a little rubbery, and in doing that I made it incompatible with the screws that came with the hardware kit. Because the, um, the main screws you use putting this thing together are these little countersunk, I think they're M3 screws, something around that size, and um, the countersink meant that you could easily just tighten the screw right through the TPU part and it wouldn't actually hold, so I had to replace those screws with some pan head screws, kind of like this where you've got the kind of built-in washer to hold it in place. It's another self-inflicted issue. As far as the hardware kit I bought from Eric, and actually building the blaster, I didn't really have any major issues. The blasters pinned together at both ends kind of like a Lynx, where you've got these two takedown pins, and it's this big U-channel aluminum bar all the way down both sides. And with my prints, and I could tell uh, Eric thought of this because he has a shim Part as part of the files that you can print in case they don't quite make it to the pins on either end and you can add a little bit extra meat to, to get them aligned. Whereas mine were a little too thick. It seemed like maybe the last layer of my prints added a little bit of thickness and when you combine all these parts it had almost a full centimeter extra where it wouldn't attach on the end. And after sanding the interfacing edges of every part a lot. I still had to take a few millimeters chunk out of this part here. And I can show you that real quick. Let's go ahead and pop this out. There we go. Take that pin out. And you can see the whole thing. There's just several sections all sliding together. And this is how I have to transport it and a few pieces. Yeah, I had to take quite a bit off of this part and you can see you can you can see infill here because of how much I had to take it down to get it to line up. So with some printers you might actually end up with too much extra material for it to line up on both ends of the bar. You might have to do that, but another minor issue. Similarly, when I first put it together the catch was extremely tight. It wouldn't release at all. It would catch and then I could not move the catch with the trigger because the catch was flush inside this orange piece back here and once it was all screwed together it was just clamped in there and wouldn't move so I had to sand down the catch quite a bit to get it to move freely which combining that with the the alignment issue all the way down the blaster tells me that maybe there's something wrong with my printer as far as the first or last layer maybe adding some extra thickness to my parts that's something that you can fix with sanding or maybe making the catch a little bit more inset in this part in future revisions of the blaster. Uh, this palm rest at the bottom of the grip, which I like a lot, it's really comfortable and kind of fits the, the size of this blaster, didn't quite fit on this handle that well. It was like super loose and I had to wrap a bunch of tape in between the parts and you can tell it's still kind of wiggly. So I wonder if there was something wrong with my print at the back end of this handle too. So the barrel has this 42 bearing scar on it, which is nuts. And the scar was a huge pain in the ass to put together. Just because you have all these bearings held in with pins, and for me the pins all either wouldn't go in, so they were super tight, or once they went in, they'd fall right back out. So I basically had to glue the pins in place. And then I wrapped this tape around it to kind of hide all the messy glue that I had to do. And imagine having that issue with those pins for 42 different bearings. So that was a pain. It's like really nicely designed and it works really well. It's just, I would really prefer there be something holding the pins in better or maybe replace the pins with screws because putting all the bearings into this scar was a nightmare. Aside from that though, it's a pretty cool scar and I really like the, the collet design here where it's got these kind of flaps that then engage onto the barrel and tighten and keep it on the barrel really nicely. For some reason he didn't go with a similar design on the actual barrel though. Um, you have this barrel nut that screws into here 
but doesn't actually hold the barrel in place for some reason. Like, you can tell how, how loose this is, and it doesn't have any kind of collet system that engages on the barrel. It just screws into this thread. So, as far as I could see on the, the moose that I had put together, uh, nothing was holding the barrel in place. So I ended up putting just this wrap of electric tape to keep it held in this way, and then now, now the barrel can't move forward, and it's held in on the other end by the breech. So that holds it in place, but I feel like I maybe did something wrong or I'm missing something because this seems to imply that it would be holding the barrel in place by screwing this together, and it does not. And the last issue I had with it was actually was the magwell. It's super loose for my magazines, and you can see this thick piece of wire I added here that just acts as a shim. And this is only an issue because Eric designed the blaster to actually be compatible with all the different Mega Mags, so it will fit a Moto Strike Mag. Whereas a lot of homemade Mega Blasters won't because the Motor Strike Mag is just weird and doesn't fit quite right. But if you then insert a Busby Tyrant Mag, it fits, it engages, but look how much it wiggles back and forth. And that wiggles enough that the magazine has a tendency to lean downwards like this so then the darts are out of alignment with the pusher and then it'll jam up and not feed correctly because this is got so much room and that is just a side effect of making it work with with these things and it's an easy fix in my case I just have this piece of wire that kind of clips in there and engages with these screw holes that are deep enough that the screw goes way past the hole so there's a little bit of hole left that I can then Put this heavy wire and clip it into those holes to create a bit of a shim and with that oh whoops there we go the magazine is flush and doesn't lean forward and have any issues and i feel like that is an easy fix with like a 3d printed shim maybe that can attach to this middle core piece to make the mag well engage with those mags if that's your main mega mag which these are the main thing i use so I needed to do that. You can already see there's a bit of a gap between this corner edge here and this middle piece. So you could probably even just print a thicker version of this piece and then it would fix that problem too. And you see it has a skinny pusher, which is interesting. Since it's a bolt, once it's closed, magazines engage with it. But then as you're doing the bolt back and forth, it turns and then the magazine's a little stuck which is fine, it's just kind of a neat design that when it's closed, you can still take magazines out, which is nice. And compared to a Ranger, I really like that we have the bolt on this side and then a window back here that lets you breech load Mega Darts. That's something you can't really do with the Ranger without reaching up into the magazine well, whereas here, it's super easy to just pop a dart into the breech. Whereas on the Ranger, trying to do that, I feel like I'm gonna get my hands crunched. And then here you can see we've got the caliber 19 by 94 millimeter AF, which anti-foam? You would you would expect like a Barrett to be like AP armor piercing maybe? So I would expect like a foam piercing or I don't know what the AF is gonna be for here, but it's it's clearly like a anti-material parody, but I don't know exactly what it means. I know this is the size of a Mega Dart. Oh, and another thing, there's a lot of room in between the shell and the barrel in the front. So much so that it makes me want a version of this blaster that lets you breech load Mega XL darts. Because <laughs> you can see, there's a lot of space here. Like if you had a big Mega XL sized barrel that you could like swap out it would probably, it would require some changes to the magwell and the front a bit, but just this amount of space makes me wonder how much work would be involved to like swap out some sort of Mega XL receiver, because that would be cool. That would require someone to design Mega XL mags and, and all kinds of stuff, but it would be fun. Anyway, let's put it back together. And you can see I added a little worker grip up here, and I like the the feel of that a lot. It's like right at the perfect place for me to shoulder this and hold it really comfortably. I'm still experimenting with sights that I like, but for now I have this sight on the front that 
I forget what blaster this is from. Probably a Nexus Pro or a Dictator or something adjacent to that, but I just like having the orange sight tip here to kind of look down. It's not good enough to aim super accurately, but it helps. There we go. Just get that scar on there. Pin in the side, and there we go. It's in one piece. On one last problem I had with this thing, I have a K12 spring in it right now, and they have a spring spacer to kind of help fit the spring. I found out the hard way that if I dry fired this blaster, the spring in the back would actually jump out of the spacer all the way and then get stuck sideways and then it wouldn't cock anymore because the spring had jumped forward and was sideways against the spacer, which is really weird. I ended up fixing that by heating the spring up really hot and melting it into the spacer. So I have the, the separate little spacer part that I've now melted onto the spring. So it gives the spring something that's holding it back so that the whole spring can't jump track like that. It was just a weird issue that I've never had before and it was super reliably happening every time if I dry fired the blaster. So you don't want to dry fire it anyway, but you also don't want dry firing it to completely render your blaster inoperable if you screw that up just once. So, And I could easily fix it by unpinning it and taking the thing apart and then the spring would, I could reseat the spring, but you don't want to do that every time you screw up on the middle of a Nerf Wars. So I love this blaster. It is super fun. Um, I like the way mine turned out with the rainbow and I look forward to playing with different spring sizes and seeing what this thing will do. Um, I have it shooting right at 200 right now to match the FPS cap for my local wars. <laughs> It'll send mega darts a couple hundred feet, no problem. It's pretty crazy. So let's show off the firing. The fun part. Get us over a chrono, shoot some cups, show you what the moose is capable of. All right, let's get some chrono numbers. Today's episode of how fast are these mega darts going? We have a moose with a K12 spring and AccuFake darts. 196, 198, 182, 197, 195. I've seen a couple low 200s and without the scar, it does consistent 210. So with barely any optimization, it's hitting 10 to 20 FPS higher than my Ranger. And I suspect I can get it to shoot a lot faster. Now whistling darts are another story. They're quite a bit lighter, and although obviously you're not going to get any kind of accuracy with them, the FPS numbers get significantly higher. 204. 206. 212. Yeah, that's another 10 to 20 FPS, but uh, you're not going to be hitting what you're aiming at with whistling darts. Actual AccuStrike darts, um, when they shoot, they're pretty good, but the rubber head likes to get stuck in the barrel, and if it doesn't get stuck in the barrel, it definitely gets stuck in the scar fairly often. So I typically just use AccuFace and don't even bother with the AccuStrike darts, but I will try to shoot one just to show it off. <laughs> 130. So that was having a little bit of trouble in the barrel. I'm surprised it actually left the barrel, because a lot of times I will try to shoot one of those, and I'll see it right here past these vents just stuck in the scar because it just couldn't make it all the way. Okay, I brought back the ballistic cups because I think it'll be interesting to see what this thing will do. Got one magazine loaded and I'm gonna see, first of all, what does one shot point blank do? And second of all, with the remaining 11 shots in the magazine, can I clear the table off? dart left. Woo! Exactly enough. Unless you count that dart that stayed on the table. But for that one, see if I can hit a dart with a dart. Let's preach load one more.
<laughs> All right, so several of those cups, especially the ones in the front, got obliterated, including this one that just had a dart in it when I picked it up. <laughs> okay, so I'm at the back end of the basement, about 50 feet away, and I want to see if I can hit the stack of cups with a whistling dart. I've noticed that the scar changes whistling darts from a complete chaotic mess where you're not going to hit anything to kind of a corkscrew in the general forward direction. So it like improves your accuracy. I'd still be hard pressed to hit the back wall from here, but you can definitely see a difference with the whistling dart, which is kind of interesting. But let's see, I've loaded one whistler in here. I want to see if I can hit the cups. I think I saw that go in between two cups. Let's try a few more. Also at this distance, you can't hear them whistle, but outside they let out this kind of supersonic sounding whistle. It's like higher pitched where it's almost not audible because they're not meant to be traveling that fast. The fact that I'm hitting the dart catch at all is kind of a miracle. I kind of hear that one whistle. That one went under the table and hit the dart box. Okay, let's load some darts in here. Let's see what I can hit. Oh, uh, just skimmed the top cup. There we go, that's better. I'm just breech loading darts at the moment, which is why it's a little slow. That's better. Well, that felt good. Oh, that was so close. One more. See, it feels pretty accurate as long as my darts aren't worn out. And that was just with one sight on the front of the blaster. I don't even have any rear sights at the moment. So basically shotgun aiming it. I was still able to hit the cups from way back here. This is like 45 to 50 feet. If I stand all the way back, it's 50, but where the camera is, is more like 45. And just to try some reactive targets, I have these pieces of styrofoam that I want to shoot and see what these mega darts will do to them. Is it going to make a clean hole, or will they explode, or will they do nothing? That looked like a clean hole. <laughs> what if I try to hit it? more of a corner? Take a look at that first one. Yeah, this is blowing holes right through them. There's the corner. Got this exit wound. Here's the one that was dead center. What if I try to go through multiple layers? Will it go through all three? That was two clean holes and a slight dent. That I don't know if you can see, but this one did not get the hole through it. This is the one I shot earlier. But it easily went through two of these. <laughs> one last thing here. Let's see what a whistling dart does to the styrofoam. Doesn't punch as hard. <laughs> but still went through. And that might look kind of scary, but here's a lynx against the same targets. It's probably also gonna put a hole through all three of them. Oh yeah, Got a clean hole through the first one. And the styrofoam went through with it and made this dent in the second one. And then it bounced upwards and just kind of nicked the third one. But now compare that to the moose. He's just hanging out over there. Shooting styrofoam is fun, but it sure makes a mess. <laughs> you got all these chunks that get blown out of the blocks. 
Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at the moose. My particular moose has been a ton of fun. I look forward to continuing to experiment with it and I want to try nesting springs to see if this will do 300 FPS. But even then I would just swap it back to 200 so I could actually use it. Super happy with it. I think Eric made a really fun blaster. I'm going to put a link in the description to where you can order hardware kits from the designer of this magnificent beast. And I'll see you soon with some more interesting projects that I've been having fun with. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, this has been Carius reminding you to have fun. Subscribe.